Oh, hello. It's been a bit of work to set up this week, but we have the Synclavia set up and I thought not only will I do some playing and we'll create some timbres on here, but I'll go through some of the questions that I get asked quite often on the channel. As you can see, I'm sitting in a rather uncomfortable position here and it's going to be a bit of a challenge to play the Synclavia this week. The reason I'm sitting over here is because I have another camera there and that's actually taking the shot of the keyboard. And if I'm playing it like normal, it's just going to block it. So I'm going to sit up this end of the keyboard and hopefully you can see exactly what's going on. It also comes with another problem that the mainframe unit of the Synclavia has two huge 120 volt fans on the front. And as such, unfortunately, you're going to hear a bit of the rumble from the fans coming through my uh, microphone. So with all that said, let's kick off, let's take a look at the synth. A lot of these are actually my sounds and some are the factory sounds. What type of keyboard is it? Does it have polyphonic aftertouch? Is it the same keyboard as the Prophet T8? There are two main different types of Synclavia keyboard. This is called the AUK or original keyboard. As such, we've got a Pratt Reed J-Wire type keyboard here. As far as I can tell and from playing it for many years and originally owning a Series 3 Prophet 5, it's exactly the same keyboard. We've got note on, note off, no pressure, no aftertouch. It's basically switches. By the time you get to the VPK keyboard, which is the one that's based on the Prophet T8, you get a really nice keyboard and it comes with a lot more functionality. This is early on. This still costs a lot of money. You can see just from the woodwork alone how much work went into this. So we've got our empty patch and we're not doing much there. So let's bring a sine wave in. There are always sine waves going on here, but the first thing you need to do is sort of bring a bit of sustain into the world. So obviously that gives you the sustain part of the envelope. Without an envelope, you get no sound. So we should now have a basic sine wave. So my Synclavia here is the very original baseline eight voice mono. As such, I've got eight voices. If I use two partials, that brings me down to four voices. And obviously if I go to four, I've got two voices to play. And depending on then how I use those voices, I can end up with a single voice, but a really complex patch in that single voice. So. We've got our sine wave, so I can either mix in partials down here, or I can go straight to FM. The way the FM works on here is very different to the Yamaha DX7. So if you think of the DX7, you have your, so you have your operator and then all the modulators and everything underneath. Here, you've got a single modulator interfacing with your oscillator. So a quick look forward is, let's do that. And you'll notice, as I'm adding FM, it's not doing anything. So once again, the FM comes in on its own envelope. So let's again add a bit of sustain, and we should now have the modulator interacting with the carrier. I always like that. I, I really should. So 
So I'm gonna move everything down a bit, because like I said, I've got to sit up this far end of the keyboard. So the way we do that is we'll grab the partial tuning and we'll move it down here. Might move it a bit further down. So like I said, we've got a harmonic envelope here. So if I change the attack time, it slowly introduces the FM and because the FM's coming in almost like a volume control. So if you think of it more that we're adding an amount of FM slowly and the amount increases as the envelope increases, and it's not a full amount of FM, it's a slow increase, almost like a slow vibrato coming in. Well, it actually is, but a really fast one. So let's, let's see how that works. And let's add that. And you can really hear those digital to analog oscillators struggling. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add the chorus feature. Now the chorus is not like the chorus on a Juno 60 or a Juno 106 or pretty much anything where a chorus is. The chorus here is taking another one of the voices, pretty much copying exactly what you've got on that patch and putting it slightly out of tune. So let's go chorus and let's add some in. So let's just add a little bit to start with to flavor. So it's sounding really great already. So we're gonna bring the FM sustain down. I'm finding it's getting a little overexcited and I want the FM to be more of an effect than to dominate the sound. So let's bring that down. That's nice. Let's add a little bit of final decay. So it's final decay is like a release. So let's add a second timbre. So I've still got that first timbre going on in the background, but I can get rid of that temporarily and with a double select, I'm now only listening to that timbre. So once again, let's bring in our oscillator and let's instead of using FM this time, let's use the harmonic engine. So I'm going to add some new harmonics. I think to me that would sound better coming in more as a flavor to the main sound. So I'm gonna add a bit of decay. So just by doing those two things, I'm already down to two voices. Maybe I shouldn't have been so cheap with the amount of voices I purchased. So that would, that would sound good without as much sustain, I think. So let's bring down the overall sustain and let's go P 
peak. Initial decay. For some reason over the years, a lot of AUKs, a lot of these original keyboards have become separated from the mainframes. And as such, you see them turn up on eBay and normally they're fairly cheap, or at least they were before everything started going a bit crazy. But the question that people always ask is, what does it do and can you get it to work without the mainframe? Unfortunately, the keyboard does nothing at all without the mainframe. Inside the keyboard, we've got some very basic logic chips that pretty much look after running the front panel here and taking the keyboard input and sending that back to the mainframe. That's all the AUK does. Like I say, if you think of this more as a computer keyboard, we've got a bunch of switches, a bit of feedback on the LEDs, and that's pretty much it. So let's have a look at some of the performance features we've got on here. I don't have any pedals hooked up, so we've got some of the things that you would normally expect, like an appagiator. And you can hear it's a single time. So it's a latchable and non-latchable arpeggiator. So you can get a single run, or you can get it to repeat. Give it a bit more speed. So as always, I hope you found that interesting. I hope that's also answered quite a few questions about the Synclavia. And if you have any questions about the system that I haven't already answered, Put them in the comments below, I'll answer them or I'll address them in a future video. If you'd like to see another video with the Synclavia, let me know as well. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll chat to you next time.